Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about macroeconomic perspective and its impacts on public administration theory. So we should start with 1929 Great Economic Crisis. And then I will explain post-war era. By post-war, I mean the Second World War. And the end of this post-war era is the oil crisis in 1973. And we will see the huge impact of oil crisis not only in the economy but also in public administration. Post war era is called by the French Les Trente Glorieuses or the Glorious Thirties, and by Hobsbawm it is called Golden Years. But first, we should start with the economic crisis and why it was a huge crisis. On the 24th of October 1929, stock market was crashed. And between 1929-1932, the stock market fell by 85%. It has a huge impact on the United States economy. It also affected the capitalist world as well. First, let's check the figures in the United States. In the USA, gross national product fell from $314 billion to $326 billion. Unemployment rate increased dramatically from 3% to 23%. I already talked about stock market exchange it fell from 83% to 22%. When we check the world production figures, we can see 31% decrease in world production and 25% decrease in the world trade volume. So what happened to deal with this great economic depression? Why do we call post-war era as glorious 30s or golden years? In order to answer this question, we need to refer to two key concepts. The first one is Fordism, the second one is Keynesianism. Now I would like to explain what Fordism is. The term Fordism first used by Gramsci, and later it was developed by Neo-Marxist Regulation School. I will send the articles to you, but here I would like to make a summary. There are two key components of Fordist mode of production. The first one is mass production, and the second one is mass consumption. And if we could make mass production possible with three basic components, the first one is moving assembly line, the second one is eight hour work, and the third one is five dollars a day. Moving assembly line is a kind of development of Taylorism because in Taylorism we had limited time and space, but we were not moving. But this time there is a moving assembly line, and again there is a limited time and space, and this limited time and space you have to do whatever ordered, for example, cutting the wires. And Ford introduced second important element to his work model, 8-hour work with three shifts. So continuous production could be possible. Ford also doubled the wages in 1914. $5 a day he gave as a wage. So in 1915, Ford could produce 1 million black 40 cars. Now let's talk about the second dimension, which is Keynes or Keynesian policies. In order to explain Keynes, we need to refer to his demand-oriented model. Aggregate demand equals to government expenditures, investment, consumption, and net export. Now, we're not concerned with net export. According to Keynes, markets cannot properly function. So there is a need for an external help. 
why markets are not functioning properly because there is no private investment if there is no private investment there is no jobs if there is no jobs then there is no disposable income if there is no disposable income then people cannot consume then Keynes wanted us to increase government expenditures to increase public investment for example state economic enterprises were set up so it increased public investments and they also subsidized people by means of social expenditures or directly they paid to unemployed people by means of increasing public investment they also increased employment level that means more jobs that means more disposable income 